So this is a video on optical isomerism. So here are our aims, there's quite a few of them. So first some definitions, you've got to be able to define stereoisomerism, enantiomer and racemate. You've got to know what optical isomers are and be able to withdraw them. Understand how optical isomers arise as a racemic mixture. Understand how different optical isomers can be distinguished and appreciate the action of drugs can depend on the stereochemistry of the molecules, that is, the different enantiomers, you'll understand what that means in a second, um, can have different effects on the body as drugs. So first, some definitions. So the first one is stereoisomer, or stereoisomerism. And if you remember back in um, Chem 1, you learn about what... Um, You know about what structural isomerism is, and that is the same molecular formula but a different structural formula. Here, stereoisomerism is the same structural formula but different arrangement of atoms in space. So that's stereoisomerism, and that's in your book if you want to look at that a little bit further. Uh, the next one is an antimer. And the enantiomer describes one of a pair of um, optical isomers, uh, which are non-superimposable mirror images, basically. And then finally, we've got racemate, or a racemic mixture, which is what you'll often it'll often be called in your exam, and that is a 50-50 mixture of two enantiomers. There we are, there are the definitions that you need. So, the question is, um, what basically what are optical isomers? Optical isomers arise when you've got four different groups around a carbon atom. So say we've got a carbon atom, um, and we'll draw it in, th in 3D, so tetrahedral arrangement around it, and it's got CH3 on it, say, it's got an H, it's got a CH2, CH3, and it's got a CL. Now, this will have a mirror image, like your hands do. So your hands um, are mirror images of each other, but you can't actually, if you try and superimpose them, they won't actually fit over each other. And this molecule will have exactly the same thing. If you've got a carbon uh, that has four different groups attached to it, we'd say that that's a chiral carbon, or an asymmetric carbon, and that will have optical isomers, or rather one optical isomer. So you draw that by putting a mirror down the middle, and then you just draw the bonds in the mirror, so you'll see that you've got the one going in and one coming out now on the other side of the carbon, you see that they're in the mirror, and then you've got one going up and one going out like so. So you've got the CL, you'd attach them the same way, so you, the one going in is always the same one, the one going out is the same one. And those two compounds will not be able to superimpose. It doesn't matter how you arrange them, they will not fit over each other, and those are different compounds, and they will react with different things in different ways. However, they have the same physical properties, the same melting points, boiling points, and so on. And the question is now is how these actually come about, and one of the ways they come about is through reactions. And... Um, the reason for that is due to the shape of the starting materials for the reaction. So if we take a carbon R group, for example, simple one there, um, this carbon R group, actually, if you looked at it from, from the side, this would actually be flat, so completely flat like that. And then if this got attacked by, say, a Cn-, minus, which you've learned about in your mechanisms, so that goes up there, and then you get a and 
that'll form an OH at the top because it basically it, it picks up an H plus. Um, this CN minus can attack from either the below the plane or above the plane, and that's equally likely. So what you get is something called a racemic mixture. You get a 50% of where the the cyanide ion is attacked below the plane, and 50% of where the the cyanide ion has attacked above the plane. And you'll get a 50-50 mixture of the two enantiomers. You can see here this carbon has four different groups around it. So this will exist as two different enantiomers, two non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And the reason why two of them have come about and they're 50-50 is because this can attack this planar molecule and it's equally likely that it'll attack, this will attack this planar molecule from above the plane or from below the plane. So I told you earlier that two optical isomers will have the same melting points and boiling points, the same physical properties. So the question is how can you actually distinguish between which one you've got? And what you do is you use light. So light exists actually as two waves that are perpendicular to each other. So you've got one wave that goes that goes up and down like this. And then you'll have another one that is perpendicular to it, like this, something like that anyway. Okay? And this is ordinary light. Now what you can do is polarise that light so you only have one of those two waves. So you can put that through a, well, a Polaroid basically, it's a special type of filter which gives you just one of those waves. And this is called plane polarised light. And what you do is you shine this plane polarised light on the two enantiomers that you might have. So say you've got two enantiomers. H, C, H3, C, L, and B, R. That's four different groups. And you've also got the mirror image. Bear with me a second. So you've got B, R, C, L, C, H3, and H. These two enantiomers will rotate this light in opposite directions. So say this light went through this enantiomer, it might um, rotate it clockwise. And if it went through this enantiomer, it would might well if it direct if this one did it clockwise and this one would rotate it anti-clockwise and then you detect which way it had been um, polarized. Sorry, you detect which way it had been rotated at the end. So what you do to, to uh, distinguish between two enantiomers, you would shine plain polarized light on the sample, and then if it Basically, the two enantiomers will rotate the plane polarized light in opposite directions. If you have a 50-50 mix of the two enantiomers, a racemic mixture, then the plane polarized light is not affected at all. It will just go straight through and it won't have been rotated either way. Now, because your body is basically a, made up of chiral compounds, all your enzymes and amino acids um, in your body are optical isomers, but your body only has one enantiomer of them. Uh, due to that, different enantiomers of different drugs will react to your body in different ways, sometimes in a bad way. So a classic case of this is thalidomide, which was given to women in the 1950s um, to cure morning sickness. One of the enantiomers of thalidomide cured morning sickness, and the other one um, deformed the fetus. It, it made the babies get... well, it made the limbs of the fetus are much shorter than they should have been. Um, so, disadvantages of optical isomers in, in medicine, if you like, are that some of them will have um, really nasty side effects, um, and also some of them will just not work. And so, if you've got a racemic mixture with half of it not working, that means you have to take twice as much, um, which is obviously a disadvantage as well, because you may have to buy twice as much to, to make it uh, work. Now you may ask, well, why do they separate them out? Um, and that is easier said than done for optical isomers. So because we've said that they have the same um, physical properties, that will include solubility and um, retention on stationary mobile phases and chromatography. So chromatography would be one way of separat separating out these optical isomers, but that can't happen because they would come out at exactly the same point. So separation of these optical isomers are ex is extremely difficult and extremely expensive. So it will only be done if if completely necessary. 
Um, another way of kind of getting around this problem is to, if you're making a drug, is to start with an optical isomer at the beginning. So start with one enantiomer, and then that will react and produce the antimer at the end that you want. Um, and because a lot of drugs come from nature, and I just said that your body is made up of a certain um, an antimer of your different enzymes, so different plants have, have a certain antimer, and so you can find one pure antimer to start with in nature. Well, this can be very difficult for certain compounds, and that's why a lot of drugs are very expensive, because you have to have very specific starting materials, which can be only found in, say, the depths of the Amazon rainforest or something. So just to recap on, on the effects, so some um, optical isomers can have nasty side effects, Some are inactive, so double dose is required. Sorry, I spelled dose wrong. Double dose, I just did it again. Double dose is required. And then finally, separation is very difficult and expensive. So, here are some past paper questions going to run through. So here is, um, is a question. If you ignore reaction 1 and reaction 2, here it's asking you, and re well, all of it in fact, ignore all that. Here it's asking you to draw a branch chain isomer of A, that's here, that exists as optical isomers. So first, there's two, there's two parts to this. First, it has to be a branch chain, which means that there won't be five carbons in the longest chain, there'll be four instead and it's got to exist as optical isomers. So you don't have to draw both of them, you've just got to draw one of them, but basically that means that one of the carbons has to have four different things around it. So what I would do to answer this is I would start with a carbon and just draw four bonds around it. And you know that's going to have to have different things around it. So you've got an H, a BR, and four um, Cs to play with. So one of these is probably going to be an H, one of them is going to be a BR, and then you've got four more carbons to um, to create two different groups with. So what I would do is put a CH3 at the bottom, and then you've got three more carbons to play with, so what you're probably going to be is C with two Cs attached to it, with an H. And you see that this will now give you a branching. So the longest chain here is one, two, three, four. You've got a branch here. And then you've got four different groups around this carbon, so an H, a BR, a methyl group, and then this group here, which is bigger than a methyl group and also branched. So here's another typical question. So phenylalanine exists as a pair of stereoisomers. State the meaning of the term stereoisomers. So remember, it's same structural formula, but a different arrangement of atoms in space. And then explain how a pair of stereoisomers can be distinguished. Look, it's two marks. First mark is to saying shine polarized light on sample. And then each stereoisomer will rotate light in opposite directions. That's important you say the word opposite. So rotate light in opposite directions. Here's another typical question on optical isomers. So this sample of X produced, a, produced consists of a racemic mixture or a racemate. Uh, explain how this racemic mixture is formed. So this compound here is an aldehyde, and an aldehyde is like this, remember, it's got a carbonyl group, and that means that this carbonyl group is going to be planar, so this starting material is planar, so you'd say aldehyde is a planar molecule, and it's really important that that point is made, that will be one of the marks. It's a planar molecule, and therefore it can be attacked 
from either side, which is equally likely, and that's the second mark. You've got to say that it has equal chance of collision from either side, or it can be attacked equally likely from either side. Finally, there's another couple of questions here. Suggest how you could show that the antenna lol produced by reduction of a ketone was a racemate and not a single nice uh, an antimer. So this is a similar question to the one before where you had to say how you could distinguish between an antimer. So what you do is again shine plain polarized light on sample. And you say single an antimer rotate it. rotate it, and then you'd say that racemate would leave light unaffected. And then finally, it's just one advantage and one disadvantage of using a racemate rather than a single enantiomer medicine. So remember, if you were using a single enantiomer, it would need to be separated. So you'd say that separation is very expensive. So that's the advantage of not separating it. Disadvantage may have side effects due to the other enantiomer that's, that's in the racemate. I hope that, um, that has helped. Um, please email me if you have any other problems on optical isomerism.